She has a powerful testimony. Um, she is a walking miracle. And if anybody knows about prayer, it's this one right here. Um, let's welcome Darlena Mays. Okay, all right. But the way God has been dealing with me since I walked in the building and even prior to uh, getting here, uh, I just, and I thought about the, 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 the title of mine is What Prayer Will Do For You. And to try to teach that, I'm like, God, I, I, I'm a living example of what prayer can do for you. And so I'm going to try to put it into words, but, but actually let you know really what God did for me and how he's, and how he, and what he is doing for me even now. Um, I, I don't know if many of you don't know, but in 2015, I was uh, diagnosed with uh, cancer. And that is actually how I got to Arizona. We were from the Bay Area. And uh, I went in for a hysterectomy and uh, didn't know I was walking around with cancer or anything. Went in for the hysterectomy, and that's when they found the cancer. And uh, had no idea. And had I not have had the hysterectomy, I would have never known I had the cancer. I would have never known I had cancer. But God is so good like that. And so had the hysterectomy. And then uh, uh, my doctor left, w went on sabbatical, did something. My doctor disappeared, did the surgery, diagnosed me with cancer. And then I couldn't find my doctor. I couldn't get in contact with my doctor. And so one of my girlfriends, who's an RN, uh, she, uh, she called the Cancer Treatment Centers of America here in Goodyear, Arizona. And so they uh, did an a informational interview with me over the phone, and then they flew my husband and I down here to Arizona. Uh, and we came down, we visited the center, and it was just phenomenal when we walked in the door. I mean, even when I walked through the, when we first walked through the door there at the center, I just felt a peace and I just felt like the presence of God was in that building. And so I was asking um, the person that was giving us the tour, I says, you know, what is it? What is it about this, this building? Well, I said, I just feel like I just, you know, I just walked into the presence of God. And she told me that before they laid the carpet on the floor that they brought in ministers from all throughout Arizona, and they, they wrote scriptures all on the floor. So everywhere you walk in that building in the Cancer Treatment Center of America, you're walking on the word of God. So that, that, that sealed it for me. I was like, you know what? This is, you know, I told me and my husband discussed it, and we were like, but this is going to be out of network. It's going to be very expensive. And, you know, but I said at the end of the day, I said, you know, God, I trust you. And I said the fact that we had such a peace about it, I knew that, we were doing the right thing. So they let me, they, they flew, they flew me back home to visit with my family and for a week and was able to, you know, spend time with my kids and everything. And then uh, a week after that, I came back here to Arizona and I actually had to live here in Arizona in 2015 for, from uh, July, from August all the way until November, December. And that's how I found the Carpenter's house. Someone at the, uh, uh, one of the hotels uh, Antoinette introduced me and, and told me about the, the Carpenter's House and how I started coming here. Because a lot of people don't even know. I've been coming here since 2015. We didn't live here then, but I've definitely been traveling back and forth since 2015. And so got here to the, uh, got here to the Cancer Treatment Center, started my chemo, uh, started my radiation, and just, uh, I mean, just, it's just, it was, uh, let's see, how many radiation? For the first cancer, it was uh, 30 radiation treatments. So when I tell you what prayer will do for you, the prayer is what sustained me through 30 radiation treatments for that first cancer. Because every time you go into that radiation machine, you don't know if you're going to make it out of that machine. You don't know if your skin is going to start burning. You just don't know what's going to happen. But because of God's goodness and his grace and his mercy and the prayers of the righteous that availeth much. And that's, you know, I stand on that. And, I, and, and that um, getting through the radiation and then after radiation, you start chemo. And, and uh, the chemo was uh, seven to eight hours long, and my chemo was every 21 days. So every 21 days, you have to go through the chemo process. So got through all of that, got through all of the treatments. God is good. Got back home to California, 
and started back trying to get back into the swing of things, get back to work, get back to a business that we were running because we owned a business, working full time, being a mom, being involved in the church, and then come uh, doing pretty good on, on the road to recovery. Bam, always in 2018, we were on our way to a wedding in New York. My husband's sister, uh, I mean, my husband's niece was getting married. And we got, uh, we, the plane landed, and my doctor called, and I went, that's kind of weird. And so I picked up the phone, and she said, Darlene, I got uh, bad news. And I said, you know, you know, what's going on? She said, your cancer has returned. Now, the first cancer, mind you, it was in uh, uterine cancer. It was, and it was stage, uh, stage 3C, which is right at almost stage 4, which any, most people know that stage 4 is terminal. It, it, and most of the time, they say you're not going to make it. And so... Uh, but God is because of his grace and his mercy and his goodness. I'm living example. I'm still here. And so when it returned in 2018, it was in the breast. And so she called me and she let me know, Darlene, the cancer has, you know, the cancer has returned. And so once again, uh, back on the plane, flying back forth here to Arizona, come back to Arizona to start treatments all over again. And so uh, uh, started, the, but thank God we caught the cancer early enough so that in two, uh, I only had to do radiation. I didn't have to do the chemo again, and I thank God for that because that chemo is so brutal on the body. But I thank God I only had to do 25 rounds of radiation. I thank God for carrying me through that and getting me through that, you know, because it was, it, you know, it was a rough road, but prayer is what sustained me. And I mean, I, I'll tell anybody that even in the, even on the days that I was inside the um, radiation machine and I would be, and I would be crying. Some days I'd be in there and I'd be in there and I would just be crying and I'd be asking, you know, God, God, you know, get me through this, help me to give me the strength that I need to fight this and give me the strength that I need. And I, every day, every day that I went into the radiation machine, I would always read Psalms 23 over me every single day. I'd anoint myself with oil. And oh, and I want to make sure that I mention this to, be, to you, is that there was a, a, a mother, one of the pastors in the church, uh, my first cancer came in 2015, and and probably 2012 or 2013, she had pulled me to the side and she told me uh, she wanted me to start anointing myself. And she had told me she wanted me to start anointing myself in my private area. And I'm thinking, why, you know, why would this woman of God tell me to start anointing myself in my private area? And do you know, had I been obedient to what she told even though it may have sounded silly to, to me and to maybe to somebody else, but what she, but little did I know that that's where the original cancer came in at. And that was, that was two, three years prior to the cancer, me even being diagnosed with the cancer, because the cancer came in 2015, and in 2012 or 2013 is when she started telling me, Darlene, I don't know why God is leading me this way, but to start anointing yourself uh, in, 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 your, in your private area and just, you know, just to start praying over yourself, not knowing what was, what, what, not knowing what was on the horizon and not knowing what was, what was on the, what was getting ready to happen coming up on that. And so I'm just, like I said, I'm just, when I, when I talk about what prayer can do for you, I'm a living example of what prayer can do for you. And I know that when you put prayer and faith and you put obedience with it. I mean, you can't you you can't help but win. You that's that's the, your prayer is your weapon. I heard somebody say that earlier today. It's your weapon. It's your it's your weapon of choice. And it's and it's when you apply it correctly, man, it's a powerful tool. It's a powerful weapon. And I, I just give God glory. And I also was thinking about what's something else that God has done for me that's so powerful that prayer has done for me. I thought about my daughter, um, uh, our daughter Kenny and our daughter, our baby girl. She was, uh, we had, uh, we had gotten disconnected from her during this time while I was battling cancer. And um, she was out on the streets and was raised in a Christian home, was raised in a, in a, in a, in a home where she had, well, she had mom, dad, siblings, aunts, uncles, and everything. And to see your baby girl out here on the street and, and to not know where she was, it was, uh, it was, a, it was rough for me as a mother not only because I'm a mother and I couldn't find my daughter, but also because I was battling cancer and, and wasn't for sure what was, you know, how I was going, you know, how I was going to do with all of it. But then to have my my baby girl out there on the streets, 
But once again, going to God, battling before God and crying before God and asking God to have mercy on my baby girl to restore her. And do you know that uh, I hadn't, we hadn't seen her in, I don't know, it, months had gone by, probably almost may, maybe even close to a year we hadn't seen her. And uh, one of my girlfriends took me up to a flea market and uh, it was a, free, a flea market that I knew that she frequented because we both used to go to this flea market. And just on, on, a, on a fluke that day, we was at the flea market and walking around and look who's at the flea market. God, look how good God was. We turned around and there was my baby girl right there at the right there at the flea market. Thank you. Right there at the flea market. I never, never, I never, I, I, even though I had been praying, I didn't know that God was going to answer my prayer request like that. I was expecting her to come to the house. I was expecting her to come to the church. But here we were at a flea market. Uh, un, unbeknownst to me that, that she would be there on the same day that I was there and that God re reunited me and my daughter and that re restoring our relationship because I tell you, I'm a mother that I love my kids and, and my kids and my family are dear and important to me and so that to have that prayer life and that that relationship with God, that God can answer your prayers and that he can restore families, that he can restore relationships. It's just, it's, it's, it's just, it blows my mind sometimes. Even when I think about the fact that when I was battling cancer, Kenny and I, we were in a, in our, our marriage was in shambles. Matter of fact, we, he couldn't even come with me to the center because I didn't want him to come with me to the center while I fought for my life. Because when you're battling and you're fighting for your life, you need to be around people that are positive. You need to be around people that can help pull you through that battle that you're fighting up against. And so you can't be around people that are negative. There's people that I had to cut off my social media. There's people that I wouldn't answer the phone for because you're in a battle. You're in a fight for your life. And so you don't have time for the negativity. And so during that time when I got diagnosed with cancer, my marriage was in trouble. I mean, it was really seriously in trouble. But God blessed me to have a, a, one of my girlfriends who uh, was a nurse, and she traveled back here to Arizona with me. Matter of fact, the, being here almost four and a half months, she stayed with me here almost three months here in Arizona while I fought for that, first, while I battled for that first cancer. And uh, I just thank God for that. And, you know, and I, the beautiful thing about it is that during this battle and during this fight, during the, this prayer and, 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 Everything that God was doing for me, God restored my marriage. He restored our family. He restored our home. So, you know, I, 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 I am a living example, and I'm a living witness of what prayer can do because I believe that, that you know, prayer is, uh, is it's just powerful. It's, like I said, I said earlier, it's powerful. And so I'm going to ask him to turn to the, uh, the first slide for me. A life of prayer. And I'm not going to go through all the, all the information because there's so much, but there are certain ones that I, I really want to hit on. Um, the, the one that I want to hit on, can you, pray, uh, prayer is a key to fulfilling relationships with God that brings you an inner peace and excitement. No one can take this peace from you. When we keep this peace throughout the day, no matter what situation arises, that day, God is right there with you. You can turn the page. Having a life of prayer does not mean situations and circumstances will not surface in your life, but having a prayer life will help you meet every situation with spiritual maturity. And I just, I mean, I gave you a best example of that. The spiritual maturity is battling cancer when you have an illness and you're having to fight for your life and you're having to lay before God, you know, and you're having to seek God, you know. And, and, and I'm going to be very honest with you. I was never the type of person that was on my knees all the time. I'm just, I just have to be honest. I mean, I'm, I can't get up here and teach something that, I'm, that I didn't do. 
But I've always believed in the power of prayer because I was raised in a Christian home. So I know the power of prayer. Was I a prayer warrior? No, I wasn't. But did I believe in the power of prayer? Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, God just reminded me that even when I was uh, in the in the uh, radiation machine every day, my sister, who's a pastor, she gave me her prayer shawl. And every day I went in that, uh, that machine, I went in there with that prayer shawl wrapped around me. I mean, every single day, that prayer shawl was either wrapped around me, it was underneath my head, it was on my pillow, it was somewhere in it because that's how much I believed in the power of prayer. And I believed that God was going to heal me. Because I was, I, one of the uh, hashtags that I use on my Facebook page all the time is, I'm in it to win it. I didn't go into this battle to lose that battle. I went into that battle to win this battle of cancer. And that's how, that's how I went in, and that's how I was coming. Coming out. I came in, I came in believing that I was going to be a winner, and I came out as a winner. And that's I you just have to stand on God's faith and stand on his belief that he's going to do what you asked. Pastor G said it a minute ago. It's all about attitude, how we feel about things, you know, how we look at things, you know, how uh, like uh, I'm thinking about my dad right now. My dad has been was diagnosed with uh, COVID in uh, December, and my dad's been on a um, ventilator since December battling COVID and you know and I mean every just about every night my sisters and I are on zoom call calling on God praying travailing asking God to deliver my dad and bring my dad out of the hospital and I mean I can't tell you how emotionally draining it is and but the one thing that keeps us going and the one thing that sustained us is prayer prayer I mean I, between prayer, between the worship songs that we sing to my dad, between the faith that we believe that God is going to restore my dad, to just us standing together in faith as a family, believing that God is going to do a miracle in my dad's life. We haven't given up on my dad. Many people, many people have a... a may have given up on our dad, but my sisters and our family and a lot of the believers that are standing with us, we haven't given up on dad. And we believe that dad, even da even now, even being on the ventilator as long as he, we're still believing because we've seen signs that he, he is fighting. I, and I told uh, someone the other night, I said, as long as dad is fighting, we're going to fight just hard. We're going to fight even harder for dad because you can't give up on people. You got to believe that if you, if you go in with the uh, belief that you're that you're gonna be win it. You gotta stick with that, even when it looks like it. Even when it looks like all hope is lost, you gotta still continue to believe that God is gonna pull them through and that God is gonna be faithful. You can turn to the next slide. God is with us, and He is bigger than any situation or problem we will will ever have to face. Amen. I'm a witness to that. God never calls us to a task without giving us the equipment we will need to fulfill the task. And that, that, that equipment is your armor, your prayer, your faith, your belief, your trust, your, that, that attitude that I'm not going to give up, that I'm going to win, you know, that, that no matter what, I'm going to fight this thing. A developed prayer life will help you to forgive. We walk in love and our wounds will heal quicker. The enemy will try to keep us discouraged and hold on to our pain and build a root of unforgiveness in us. But a prayer life will close that door and we will become an overcomer and virtuous in every situation. You know, and I think Michaela talked, she uh, talked on that, the forgiveness. You know, that was one of the things that um, God blessed me to be able to. Uh, by being at the cancer treatment center, that was one of the classes that they allowed me to take when I got there. One of the things they do for you at the uh, cancer treatment center is they assess you when you get there and they find out what are some of the things that, that you're dealing with that, that, that why, you, why, this, why this cancer came upon you. you know, and they immediately saw one of the things that I was dealing with was unforgiveness. I, a, root of, a, a root of unforgiveness that I was carrying that I didn't even know I was carrying for years and years and years. And so what they did is they put me in a, a, a class, a, a healing and forgiveness class, because I didn't know it before that is that a lot of people who have sicknesses, it's all from a root of unforgiveness, things that we haven't dealt with, anger, bitterness, 
hatred, just uh, stuff that we just have squashed down and haven't, and, and haven't dealt with and has caused a, a root of unforgiveness in us. And what happens is, like my doctor explained to me, is that it has to get out. And the way it gets out, it gets out through cancer, strokes, heart attacks, different, different other types of sicknesses that happen in our body, uh, um, depression. You know, so these are the things that, that uh, when we don't deal with uh, unforgiveness and we don't deal with it, it will cause health issues for us. And so I was, I was really glad that, uh, not that I got cancer, but that I got to a center that dealt with the issues that I needed to deal with and that helped me through that. Because at the center, they not only gave me, they not only give you a uh, class on healing and forgiveness, but you have a... A uh, nutritionist, a dietitian, a acupuncturist, a chiropractor, I mean, anything and everything, a spiritual advisor, I mean, an oncologist, a radiologist, you have a whole team of doctors that take care of you. And so they're helping you to deal with all the stuff that you're carrying and that you haven't let go of. And so I was really fortunate to be, to be able to go to the center and to be able to deal with a lot of this stuff. And uh, let's see, are we ready to go into the next? You can go on to the next slide. Thank you, right there. God moves through the power of prayer to direct the darts away from his prayer warriors, placing us in a position of victory. God is a God of victory, and he wants us to walk in victory. The greatest thing any of us can do for God and man is to pray. Prayer is the winning blow. God shapes the world by prayer. The more prayer there is in the world, the better the world will be, the mightier the forces against evil. Prayer will bring strength into your life. Matthew 9, 22 reads, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Amen. And then I, I wanted to bring up this chart uh, that I did. I did a little research on uh, Google, <laughs> Pastor D on Google, and I found out... <laughs> And uh, Google, when it's used correctly, it's a, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a powerful tool. You can just about find anything on there. But I wanted to know what was the, the age breakdown of how frequently that people pray. And I was, uh, I was really uh, impressed with the age 18 to 29, daily 41%. Ages 30 to 49, 54%. Ages 50 to 64, 61%. Now, this is daily, the percentage of people that pray. And the 65 and older is 65%. And I was wondering, I would think that the 30 to 49-year-olds would probably, I was thinking that that would be the highest gr uh, group that would be praying. And then when I started doing the research, it, the 65 and older was the highest group. And, uh, and you want to know why? Can anyone tell me why that group is the highest group for praying? Because what? That, and there's another piece. That's a good one. That's it. Because what? They're close to death? <laughs> uh, no. 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 That's okay. That's okay. That could be true. That could be some truth. But you know what it is? They're praying for their kids and their grandkids. They're praying for their kids and grandkids. And so that's why that number is so high because I was thinking, wonder why, you know, that number was so high because they're praying for their kids and their grandkids because they want to see them make it. So they're constantly praying and keeping a covering over their children because I know I do it. I pray for my, as a matter of fact, when I was in the radiation machine, I took pictures of my grandkids in that machine just about every day with me because that gave me, that you gave me something to look at to say, this is what you're fighting for. This is, you, you're, and my kids, this is what you, this is what why you want to win because you have so much life ahead and you want to win this thing and you want to overcome and you want to come out victorious and so I, I would look at their pictures and I would just you know I think and another thing that the, that I wouldn't have been able to do at a regular hospital that they allowed me to do at the cancer treatment center is that uh, I made some gospel music and so every day while I was in that machine they would allow me to play my gospel music that machine would be so loud, but I tell them to pump up my music and blast it. So when I'm in that machine, I could hear my gospel music playing. I could hear no weapon formed against me shall prosper while I'm in that radiation machine. So that's, that, that's what I said. You use the tools that God has given you and just it's so powerful. And so that when we use it, 
man, I mean, we, we come out on the winning end, and, you know, we don't lose, you know, with God. And, you know, and I've heard people say that, you know, that um, why, do, why do bad things happen to good people? Because we wouldn't have a testimony. If they wouldn't go through some bad things, we wouldn't have a testimony. We wouldn't be able to tell of God's goodness. We wouldn't be able to tell how victorious, how God brought us through, and that how did we win it. You know, everybody, I, when, I, when I thought about it, I said, you know, um, I, people used to always ask me all the time, what stage is your cancer? And I used to always tell them, and God rebuked me one time and told me, don't tell them your stage because when you tell them, when you, t- <laughs> when you tell them your stage, they always say, uh, oh, I'm sorry. And you know what I'm sorry means, right? I'm sorry means you're going to die. So, I, so God rebuked me, and, and I would not never tell people that when they would ask me uh, what stage I was with my cancer, God reminded me, and God told me to say stage Jesus. So every time you ask me what what was my stage? I said, stage Jesus. They would say, what stage is that? Stage Jesus. Because that's just what I believed. I believed that no matter what that stage was, that Jesus was with me. He was going to carry me through. He was going to protect me. He was watching over me. I didn't, I, didn't have a, I didn't have a stage to report other than stage Jesus. All right? Amen. And prayer is the key to the kingdom, but your faith unlocks the door. Amen. You can turn to the next one. We must go to the heart of God, Matthew 11, 28, which reads, Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, weight it down, and I will give you rest. Nothing like God's rest. Nothing like it. You can't, I mean, you can't compare it. Don't be disappointed or even surprised when life deals a blow that forces you to retreat to God. Even when our understanding ends and our discipline fail, God is right there. Seek God. He satisfies after all and above all. Even in our grief, we must learn to rest in God. God did not design our pain. He knows what's happening with us. Job 5, 8 through 9 reads, But as for me... I would seek God, and to God I would commit my cause, who does great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. Amen. I'm going to uh, pass this out. I have a handout. Sweetheart, would you mind passing that out? I hope I have enough for everybody. Thank you. So as you get them, I'm just going to ask uh, uh, eight volunteers, whoever wants to do it, just eight keys to a more powerful prayer life in 2021. Who wants to read the first one? Mary, you want to read it? Go ahead. Oh, got to come up the mic. Know to whom you are speaking. Prayer is a conversation with God. And every conversation begins by addressing the person to whom you are speaking by name. Thank you, Mary. Number two. Mm-hmm. Thank him. A heartfelt thank you is always a great conversation starter. Like any parent, God loves to see what we have grateful hearts, that we have grateful hearts, sorry. Thank you, thank you. Number three? Number three, ask for God's will. It can be hard to know how to pray or what to ask for when difficult circumstances arise. But the one thing we can know with absolute certainty is that God's plan for those who love him is good. And the safest place we can be is in the center of his divine will. Amen. Amen. Number four. All right. Number four, Mm -hmm. say what you need. Say what you need. The Bible says you do not have because you do not ask God. So never hesitate to ask God for what you need in 2021. Your father in heaven delights to give you good gifts. Thank you. Number five. 
ask for forgiveness. James 5.16 reminds us that if we want our prayers to be heard, our hearts need to be right with God and with one another. If you feel your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling, take some time to check your heart. Amen. Amen. Number six. Pray with a friend. There is power and agreement when you pray in Jesus' name. When I have an urgent need to take before the throne of God, I will often call a friend to pray with me. If you don't already have one, make, find, make finding a trusted prayer partner one of your goals in 2021. Amen. Beautiful. Number seven. Pray the word. The word of God has power and is our great spiritual Ooh. weapon. Amen. And number eight. Thank you. Memorize scripture. The most important key to a vibrant prayer life is to understand our spiritual authority in Christ as explained in the scriptures. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So those are the eight key to a more powerful prayer life in 2021. Amen. I'm almost at the end of my uh, presentation, but there was one thing that I wanted to, uh, you know, make mention of that, that happened recently in the news, and it's really... It really, you know, bothered my spirit, um, and I've really been seeking God uh, on it, and, and I was glad that Nike uh, won their case against it. I don't know how many of you all have uh, watched the, uh, the the shoe scene, the, the young man with the, the, with the sneakers who, uh, who uh, he actually made 666 of the shoes, and then he also had a drop of blood uh, in each pair of the shoes, and uh, they were called Satan shoes, you know, and I thought, you know, the, you know, some people are so bold with their, with their, with their, their with their, with their, with the things that they want. And I said, God, we got to get even more bolder. The church does. I mean, because, you know, we're, 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 we're seeing things that I never thought I would see somebody making a, a pair of shoes with uh, blood in it. And then not only did he make the shoes with blood in it, but then he put a Bible scripture on the side of it. I'm like, God, that's, that, you know, it's such blatant blasphemy. But I said, you know. It's really going to cause the church for us to really wake up and see what's happening around us, you know, and just, you know, we can't, we can't be walking around here with blinders on. I mean, we really got to be up with what's up with what's <laughs> Pastor D. I'm so sorry. We really got to be up with what's happening. I get so excited. And I just forget to put the mic up. But uh, I just want us to be mindful of things that are that are happening around that our kids are. You know, I even, I even have to watch some of the shows that my granddaughter watches because a lot of the shows they have a demonic overtone in them. I mean, and it's it's Satan is. And I you know I, I'll try to explain it to her and I'll try to let her know. You know, and she didn't. You know, she didn't see. It, but when I show her and I try to tell her and let her know what's behind it and that it's witchcraft and you know we can't we we've got to be you know we got to have a you know and I you know told Kenny you know Kenny and I have been talking about this we got to set aside uh, every day making sure that we got prayer in our home every day we keep gospel music flowing in the house every day we got making sure that we don't go to bed mad at one another and that we uh, and that we, we we deal with the issues of whatever we've gone with the, gone through that day because we're, we're really fighting for our lives I don't know if y'all realize it but I mean every single day we are fighting for our lives I mean when you think about it uh, matter of fact, Bishop Jakes is re releasing a movie tonight. I don't know how many of you will get to see it, but it's called Lust. It's produced by T.D. Jakes, and it's on Lifetime tonight on Lifetime. If you get a chance to watch the movie, and it will, t and he, and because I got to watch the trailer the other day, and it's talking about the things that we are facing on a daily basis, and that. We're not going to be able to face this stuff lightly. We're going to have to. I love how Pastor D is. She's so up in your face and she's so hard with it. You know, because, I mean, the world is like that. So we're going to have to be even harder. You can, we cannot be weak. And I like that decree. I'm not a wimp. I am really strong. I may have tried to, I may have taken a softer overtone when I, you know, when I, <laughs> when I came to the Lord. But I am no punk, you know, and I'm serious about my, my fight because you can't, you can't battle cancer twice and win when, when, and be no wimp. You got to be something strong. You got to be a real warrior. You know, even my shirt today, I'm, this is not coincidence that I wore this shirt. This shirt, I had it made, uh, one of my girlfriends, it says, what does it say? It says, pray on it, pray, 
pray over it and pray through it. I'm not playing. I mean, I'm serious about what I need God to do in my life and what I need God to do in my family's life and that I really want to make heaven. You know, it would be, it'd be a shame to be in this fight all these years and lose the battle. And that would be a fight. You know, and I remember something that God told me when I was battling cancer and that everybody was, you know, there were several, some people didn't think I was going to make it. And I remember God, oh, man, he spoke this into my back. He says, daughter, if you, if I, he says, you can't lose in this battle. He said, if I give you more time, you win. You win. He said, you win this battle. He said, if I take you home, you still winning because you're with me. So there's no way you can lose the battle. You ain't lost the battle. You win the battle. You know, and so that's the type of, that's the type of victory that we have to walk around with that. You know what, God, I thank you. I thank you for, and, and I don't take the, the fact that I'm alive because I saw uh, um, probably maybe 10 girlfriends passed away from cancer all while I was battling cancer. Some of them with the same exact cancer that I was diagnosed with. So when, when you see your friends, people that you love and that you care about, dying from the same thing that you're dying from and that God has had mercy and he's extended grace to you. You have an appreciation for life. Every day matters to me. I don't take one day lightly. I mean, I whatever I can do to help somebody on a daily basis, I mean, I'm in it. I, when I said it earlier, I'm in it to win it. I'm in it to win it because I don't, I, don't, I don't take what God has done for me and done for my life and extended this time for me lightly. I, I got to be a about God's business. I got to be about whoever I can talk to, whoever I can speak into. You know, my I mapped out my whole journey, cancer journey on Facebook. If you if you followed me on Facebook, you saw every time I went in the radiation machine. You saw every time I was laying up in the chemo lab with 7 to 8 hours of poison uh, flowing through your body for 7 to 8 hours. I journeyed that cuz I wanted people to see the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God because I wanted them to know that if God did it for me, he can do it for you and that you can win in God. We don't have to be losers, you know, and I just, and, it, and, and even if we do lose the battle, we won the war with God. So we never, never look at yourself as a loser. Always look at yourself as victorious and a winner with God, you know, and so uh, I'm going to wrap this up because I'm at the end of my uh, presentation, but there was one little small thing Thank you and God bless you all. It's not a Q and A again. It's if you have not seen the movie yet, The War Room, see it. Yes. It's inspiring. It's just see it. That's all I can say. I think Amen. it was only about four years ago that it came out. I can't remember. I can't remember I went either. To see it. I got the DVD. Now I need some help from Brittany to be able to use my computer to watch my DVD. But <laughs> all right. But yeah, it's you will be so happy. Amen. Amen. Anybody have any Q and A? Um, okay, I have one question for you. For me? Yes, for you. And I learned this from you. You want to grab that? That's your friend. Okay. No, no, no. You keep it for you. That's your friend. Okay. <laughs> I just can't come too close because the, the okay. frequency. Okay. Okay. However. Um, I think I learned this from you in regards to the, I think we had a conversation, I'm almost positive it was you. The cancer center um, place, treatment, they incorporated the class for forgiveness you talked about. But it was not based on biblical uh, um, principles mm -hmm. of unforgiveness connected to cancer. Can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit, please? It was, it was not connected. That's your friend. Uh -huh. okay. It was not connected to biblical, but it, it, but it did have a biblical overtone to it. Because, uh, like I said, part of, the, part of the class was not just um, literature, but it was actual, it, the, most of the participants, it probably was about 20 of us in the class, uh, we all shared our stories, and most of us all had a, 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 a Christian background, and, and so it was, uh, it it was a, it was a it was a real experience. I mean, it was a lot of healing. There was a lot of crying. There was a lot of coming to face with reality of things that 
we knew we needed to deal with, we needed to handle, we needed to ask God for forgiveness for. And uh, I had even forgotten, I was sitting up when I was talking uh, up here, I had completely forgotten about how, uh, I forgot to share about the story about um, how I lost 80% uh, of the vision in my left eye. And that was because I had gotten so upset about a situation that uh, I let myself get so stressed that uh, I didn't even know it. Uh, I, was, uh, I had uh, broke a, a vessel in the back of my mm -hmm. eye and I didn't know I had even broke it. And I, was right, and I thought it was allergies. So I was riding around for two weeks like that with that eye red. And finally my, one of my managers said, Darlena, go to the doctor because that eye is still red. By the time I went to the doctor, because I didn't get, get it taken care of, it caused me to lose 80% of the vision in my uh, left eye. But, had I, the, but the beautiful thing about it is that had I not have listened to God when I got myself so worked up, because God had definitely told me to go lay myself down. And I went and did what God told me to do, is to go and lay myself down and rest my body. And, you know, because I, I didn't realize that I had gotten myself so worked up. And the doctor even told me, he said, it's a good thing you did that. He said, because you probably could have lost the vision in that right eye. And, you know, could you imagine that? That means I wouldn't have been able to see out of either eye. But because God, is, once again, the prayer his, the, the, the obedience, listening to Come the on. voice of the Come Lord, That's it. going and laying myself down, even though I was really, I was really worked up, I went and laid myself down like God told me to do, and it saved my right eye. Sometimes we don't understand why God tells us to do certain things, and we get ourselves in situations, and we work ourselves up, because as women, we're pulled in so many different directions. I mean, kids, grandkids, jobs, booze, husbands, whatever. We're pulled in all different directions. And so a lot of times we give, 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 but we, f we forget to refuel. And, and, and by the time we know it, we've given everything and we've got nothing left. You can't pour from an empty vessel. You gotta have something to give. And, and, and so I say that all to say is that, you know, when, by the time I got to the center, I realized then I had, I had given all. I, had, I was in bad shape. I needed, I needed some help. I needed to get cleaned up, inside out. That, that, that was the best thing I could have did for my life was to come to the Cancer Treatment Center because not only did it help me spiritually to get back and then being able to get here to the Carpenter's House and have a place of a home, a church home to be at when I was here in Arizona, but also the fact that I, they, all their food was organic. I ate healthier at that center than I've eaten my whole entire life because they grow all their own fruits and vegetables. And don't you own a restaurant? Uh huh. I did. <laughs> and then and then what kind? Yeah, uh, barbecue. <laughs> so you know, so to be at a center like that where you're eating organic food, you're eating healthy. I mean, vegetables, fruits. I mean, uh, 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 um, grass-fed meats and things like that. I mean, it. That's, that was all part of the healing part. It was, a, I mean, really coming here to the center was truly a setup from God. I mean, because mm -hmm. I should have stayed in California, but like I said, when that doctor disappeared and went to sabbatical for me, it opened the door for me to be able to come here to Arizona. I don't know if I would have been alive had I stayed in California because I needed a whole packet. I didn't just need chemo put in my body and fighting the, chemo, fighting the cancer. I needed cleansing inside out. I needed to deal with stuff that I've been carrying around for so, years. So I want you guys to see this. A cancer center treatment operating in biblical principles, but they're not a Christian facility, a Christian facility. that science was able to prove and validate what God said, be anxious for nothing. That's not, he didn't ask us not to be anxious. It's a command. Why? Because he knows how he designed our bodies. So if we operate in anxiousness, if we operate in anger, we operate with stress, then there's things that he knows that happens to our bodies that it is not supposed to be happening within our bodies. So in other words, obedience is better than your sacrifice. That we're called to be obedient. It blew my mind when she first told me that. And I said, what, what is that a, a Christian cancer center? She said, no. But it was scientifically proven that unforgiveness was connected 
to some things being released in our body that will cause poisonous and cells to be deformed and irregular, that we have to understand that when God says, keep my Sabbath day, or we're going into the Ten Commandments after the tabernacle, but keep my Sabbath day and keep it holy. Why? Because he knows that I designed you that six days you work, but on the seventh day, you better rest your body. If you don't rest your body, then it becomes stressed. If it becomes stressed, then you get sick. Then you get sick, you can't do anything for me. Now I got to kill my little lamb because you didn't follow what I, I suggested, commanded you to do. So when we love him, he said in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep and obey my commandments. Amen. So you can't say, well, it's just in the Old Testament. We, if we, we, we got to understand the Bible is one book. It's just defined as this portion and that portion that's all one mixture. Amen? It, it, it's all one. You can't separate the two. There is no such thing. You can't null and void the old and just carry the new. The new won't matter if you don't understand the old. The old is echoing and prophesying to the new. The new is saying, look, I heard what you said, and I'm fulfilling what was said. But if you don't know what was said, it doesn't matter. Then we're just like any other um, occult. Amen? So I need you to understand. Take time and rest. If you didn't learn anything from what she said, I need you to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, it is not an option. It is not an option. You must rest your body. You must not be under stress. And if you are, you need to get it off of you immediately and rest yourself. Rest your spirit, man. Rest your soul and rest your body. Amen? Amen. All right. Yeah. Okay, uh, Sister Darlene. This, this is an easy question. <laughs> But we often talk about how we speak things into existence. So you talked about people asking you what stage cancer you were in. And you stop saying stages and you start talking about stage Jesus. Can you expound for us how that changed your mindset and the way you felt when you started to speak differently? I, I, I knew that I was going to win the, the, the battle. I knew that I was going to win. The, but once I started really claiming it and everything about me, my presence, just um, when you talk to me on social media, when you talk to me on the phone, when you talk to me on text messages, I mean, I, 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 I breathe win, winner. Matter of fact, I remember uh, I came here to Carpenter's House and Pastor Ron, I'll never forget that message. He says, you can't speak winning and look defeated. You can't, you can't do it. You can't say you're going to win and you look defeated. You ha if you're going to be a winner, you got to look like a winner. You got to smell like a winner. You got to talk like a winner. And that's what I did. I mean, that message, I mean, I'll never forget. It was so powerful. And, and it just did something to me. And when I started saying stage Jesus, just something about it something about it ha just changed things because like I said it was uh w when I used to say that I had stage almost right at stage four people would say I'm sorry you know like you're gonna die you ain't you out of here girl you ain't gonna make it because most people think stage four terminal cancer is it's it's a it's a death sentence but when God corrected me on that and don't and don't say that no more say stage Jesus it changed the game it was a game changer you're absolutely right it was a game changer amen Amen. Oh, you have a question? Okay. Uh-huh. Not a question. It's almost just a comment as well. Okay. Oh, I have one too. Real quickly, um, back then, by 1995, my mother had cancer. And the first thing she told the whole family, don't tell anybody. They'll have me dead. And we all said we kept that, you know. And I was in school then, 
uh, going into some things that had to do with uh, mental health. And uh, I wrote this paper. Someone gave me some books. I wrote this paper, said none of these diseases. None of these diseases had a lot to do with biblical principles and what not to say and what to say. One of the things was that you don't be angry. He said, the Lord said, be angry for nothing. Don't go to sleep on your wrath. That was one thing. Those are seeds, mm -hmm. and people don't realize it. Right. Another thing was forgive others. Let it go. Don't go to sleep on your wrath. That was another thing, because that's another poison you put in your body. That's right. In this book, when I finished writing the paper, because the teacher had asked for an essay, and also for a report, when I finished with this, she gave me an A because she was a believer. And I was going through the hospitals and everything and checking out what the people and how they had the cancer and why they had the cancer, and also praying for different ones. It was amazing to see them delivered and what was really going on, Amen. you know. But yes, you gotta forgive, you gotta release that thing Amen. because it is a poison yes, and it is. will kill you. Yes, it will. You know, and anger, you can't go to sleep on your anger. He said it's okay to be angry, but sin not. You know, so there is a reason for it. You know, and there's still some other commandments, but I know we're short on time, and this is not my report. <laughs> <laughs> I praise God for you, sister. That is awesome. Amen. And I'm gonna let this mic go. I'm gonna drop the mic in here. <laughs> yes, Mary. Just a, a brief comment on what Pastor D said about the Old Testament. They used to be called the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. What's a covenant? It's an agreement made by two parties where blood is shed and exchanged. Jesus Christ paid for our covenant with our Father God. He's the one who initiated it. He's the one who will see it to fruition. And the old covenant did not pass away. What we call the new covenant is just an extension of that old covenant. So if you want to look through the Bible, you will find Jesus all through the old covenant. Mm -hmm. I don't know when it got changed to testament, which means the last will and testament, <laughs> instead of the covenant, which is mm -hmm. a living agreement, which no one can break. Amen. 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 It's ours. I like how she pointed a finger. <laughs> <laughs> no one. Amen. All right. Well. Let's give Darlena a round of applause. Amen. <laughs> Wonderful teaching. Hallelujah. Um, we're going to have um, an offering. We're going to raise an offering. Um, and we also, I want to put in your spirit, um, the young lady I shared with you, Ruth, um, from in Africa, in Kenya. And if you would mark um, an envelope, we have to start um, sewing into that because I want to send her a check so she can be able to go to school. Um, and we're going to pay for her whole year. We're not giving her the money. We're paying directly to the school. Amen? Amen. 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 And we have to raise $8,000. Amen. And so you cannot say that, speak death over that. We have to speak life. Well, Pastor D is not that many of us, and we have to do it before June. Yes, before June. So um, I've been talking with Pastor about getting the other ministries and the church to join in with us, but we still have to sow our seed and do it first. Amen? Amen. Amen. So far, we've raised $1,500. Oh, oh y'all can do better than that. $1,500 is only a few. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, come on, give me one, too. So before you leave, I'm going to have you, because I'm going to pray over it right now, and then I want you to put it in the bucket, because I know we went over time, so I want to release you, and I thank you for your patience of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Because he kept us. Hallelujah. And if he keep us, it's a good thing. Amen. Um, so if you would hold up your envelope or, or hold up your hand, um, because you didn't put it in the envelope, it's okay. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus as we commit this seed to you, Lord God, to bless this ministry as well as bless um, the ministry that you called us 
um, to the community to, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, that we would sow into um, Ruth, Father God, that she would um, prosper for her family because she's a provider for her mother and her, her siblings, Lord God, that we would be a part of, of, of helping a family um, being able to eat and to buy the things that they need and understand it was by the hand of the Lord that she would be a strong testimony in that region for you, Lord God. And you named her Ruth. Oh, my goodness. So, Lord God, let her not just glean from other people's pastures, but glean from the pastures of the Lord, her Redeemer. And we just praise you and thank you and bless each um, person that gives and sows, um, be it in this ministry and sows into um, Ruth's ministry and her family. Bless them a hundredfold, Lord God. Bless them bountifully and let us give generously that you may release generous blessings so we can continue to be um, generously giving to others. So we bless you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And you may also, I didn't know we were still online. I'm sorry, Pastor Ron does this very eloquently. We're still on, online, and I would like for you to be able to text um, your offering to Child Church to 77977 and online, thechildchurch.org, um, and go click on the online give. Or you can mail it to P.O. Box 1208, Litchfield Park, Arizona, 85340. Um, we're going to go ahead and close out in prayer. Um, Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you for this word. We thank you for this teaching. We thank you for the, the instructors that you gave, Father God, the, the teaching of today, Michaela, and Darlena, Lord God, bless them mightily. And all the speakers that um, you have given them such wonderful downloads to teach us, Lord God, as we sat at your feet in a position and posture of Mary when we cease from our labors as Martha. Bless us, God, in our coming and going. And put your mighty angels around each uh, woman of God as they leave this place. And people listening by live stream, bless them, Lord God. Um, put your mighty angels around them as well to guard them, protect them, and your Holy Spirit to speak words of wisdom into us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.